Hello everybody, uh, welcome to Excel. So this is the big monster of all three of the programs that we're going to tackle. Most people are afraid of Excel because just look at it, it's very different than what we're used to seeing. And it's a little hard to intuit if you're not used to using Excel. So we're going to go through everything and make sure you're an Excel expert by the time that we're done. So a couple tabs here, Home tab, Insert tab, Page Layout, Formulas. Very. These first three are very similar, same with File. Formulas is a bit different. Again, it can look a little intimidating. Here's data. Uh, again, a little intimidating, but not too bad. Review, a little bit of the same. Here's spell check uh, and view. Just, you know, basic view stuff. Not that bad at all. So Excel is made up of tabs here. Uh, we can have usually one sheet or a couple sheets. These are called worksheets in a workbook, which is the whole Excel spreadsheet, all of them, all the sheets put together. So if I ever refer to this workbook or another workbook, I'm talking about an Excel document. If I'm talking about different sheets, which will have multiple different sheets by the time we're done, you'll know which one to go to and what I'm talking about. Excel is made up of cells, like this guy right here. And the cells are all over the place. There are hundreds and of thousands of cells all together. I even think with the newer version of Excel, it might even be in the millions of cells that are listed. So that's, there's a bunch. So there are a lot. Up here is the name box. It will tell you what cell you're in, and you can tell by the cell reference that's right there. So if I ever ask you for a cell reference, I mean to tell me what cell you're in. And you can know because you're in column A and you're in row 1. These are the columns. These are the row. This is cell F6. This is cell D5, this is cell C15, this is cell J11, what have you. Our name box will always tell us what cell we're in, so if we don't feel like looking it up in the grid form, we can just look at the name box, and there it is. Uh, should we name a cell, we type it in there. I don't think we're going to be doing that, but if someone ever asks you to, that's where you go. This right here is called the formula bar. This will tell you everything that's in the cell, even if you can't see it. So that right there it is, uh, there's a little formula button here with an enter and, a, and cancel, although we won't use those buttons very often. So again, if I tell you to type something in the formula bar or to go to the formula bar, that's where you go. And I would highly recommend that you use this uh, formula bar to edit any kind of content that you have in cells because if you just click on a cell and click delete, you'll delete the whole thing out of there and you'll kind of be stuck. So to move around, we hit enter to go down and we hit tab to go one cell to the right. Uh, when you do that, it will complete or do any formula or function that you've put in there. So oftentimes I'll tell you to hit enter after a formula or a function and it will just do the math right there for us. Right here, this is a highlighted cell. You can see it has a little green line around it. If I want to highlight a bunch, let's say right here from A1 to F5, uh, this is called a range of cells, so I will tell you sometimes to highlight the range. This is what I'm talking about. And I usually give you start and end coordinates so you know where you're going to. Take a minute. I know this is confusing. If you need to rewind and go back over something, I would recommend doing it right now. Otherwise, we're, gonna, we're going to keep going. One of the things I recommend to people when they're using Excel is to visualize what you want before you start building your spreadsheet. Because this is a little bit different, you can get a little bogged down or confused or missing things if you don't plan ahead first. And usually that planning takes maybe, I don't know, two minutes in your head, maybe even that much once you're used to using Excel, just to map out the column headings, what the rows are going to say, that kind of thing. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is in cell A1, we're going to highlight a range from A1 to I1, so let's go to here. And we're going to type in, I'm sorry, first we're going to click Merge and Center. That will merge all these cells into one big cell, and it will center it. And here we're going to type in our snack food company dash production. All right, and you see it pops up both in the cell and in the formula bar. So if I wanted to go back a little bit, uh, it's tough because I'm out of the cell with the arrow keys. So if I needed to go back and fix a typo, I have to go into the formula bar and click. As you can see now, I can use the arrow buttons and everything works. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the title style of that. So I'm going to give that title. All right, looking nice. 
Uh, I usually like to leave a space in between. That's a personal preference. You don't have to do that on your homework, but you certainly can if you choose to. All right. So we're actually going to give this another group of spaces here. So we're going to put in, in let's say here, A1. We're going to type in our my products. So to go ahead and type in the products that you have been using. I'm going to go ahead and put those in right now. Okay, there they are. And you can tell that they kind of bleed over the cells a little bit here in B column. And we don't really want that because when we start putting things into B column, I'm going to put in a number, it overlaps that. And we don't want that at all. So what we have to do is we have to resize the cells. So what we can do is put our, our pointer right between A and B column and you see how it changes style there. We're going to double click and resize the cell automatically to the biggest size, the biggest size content that we have. Cool. And that will do that for everything within that column. It's helpful. All right. And then in, uh, let's see here. Let's go to A3 and let's put in some months. I'm going to go ahead and put those in now. And there they are. We'll have to resize a few cells here. Not hard to do. For what it's worth, I love resizing cells. I just, I love it. Let's go ahead and click center here and center them. Careful not to hit merge and center, it will yell at you. So we'll just hit center. We may have to resize a scotch. Okay, a little bit there. And we're good. And we may resize some cells as we start putting in some numbers. Let's go ahead and give our column headings uh, heading one, as I happen to like how that looks. And again, resize our cells here a bit. There we go. All right. So starting in B4, let's go ahead and put in some numbers. We can use the numbers we were using in Word and give us some more because I think we have more months here. So go ahead and put those in. Okay, and there they are. You see my numbers are pretty big. That's important because it's going to help us with some of the other functions that we do. Your numbers don't have to be necessarily this big. I just like big numbers. And let's go ahead and send the range here too, just so it looks nice and professional. I happen to like that a lot. Okay, there we are. All right, so let's go down here to A12. Oops, A12, and let's type in... Uh, total units produced. And let's go ahead and make sure we're out of our cell. If you see the insertion point in our cell, we're still in it. So if I ever try to click out of the cell, that's what I mean. Just click on a different cell and click right back to it. Let's highlight all the way over to I12 and let's give this the cell style of total. You see it gives us some nice borders here, which is helpful. And we're going to put in a formula. And what a formula is, is just Excel doing some basic math. But there's a way that we have to type it in. So what we have to do is we have to put in an equal sign and an open parenthesis, which sometimes I call a sad face because that's what it looks like. And now we can just kind of click on the cell we want. We'll hit plus on the keyboard and we'll add another one and we'll just keep doing that. And as you can see, they get different colors to them as we add them. So each one gets a border, and the newer versions of Excel, each one gets a color. Sometimes the color repeats, but that's okay. Uh, but it's good to help you see what's in your formula, which is always really nice. So we don't need a plus there. We need to close our parentheses, and that is huge. And you can even see how they got bolded. That's important, because if we leave the parentheses open, Excel won't know what to do, and it will yell at us. So let's hit Enter, and there's some math for us. Look at that. So that just did all the math right there, right there for us. So go ahead and uh, put the same in for the rest of the months. And there they are. We may have to recenter that again. Not a problem. Okay. You'll even notice that in this uh, style heading, the titles are bolded. So the totals are bolded, which is nice. Okay, so now let's move on to functions. So functions are where Excel gets crazy powerful. It can do things like math. It can pull out individual uh, things from a range. It can do all kinds of stuff. But it's important that we get a couple terms down here first. Anything with text in it in a cell is called a label, and any cell with numbers in it, those are called values. So in this case, we're going to be doing a lot with values, but we'll put in some labels as we go forward. Okay, so over here we're going to type in J3. 
we're going to type in total. What's the difference you ask? Well, in this one, uh, we're going to be doing total for each individual product line. And uh, you will notice we get the same kind of font, I'm sorry, same kind of cell style, but it doesn't have the underline. We'll fix that when we're all done. It's a quirk of Excel. All right, so we're going to put in here in J for the sum function. So it starts off just like a formula with equals, but in this case, we're going to type in sum, and you can see a whole bunch here of options. We're going to open our parentheses, and what's really cool about the sum function is we can just kind of drag across what we want to, to add in there, and we're going to close our parentheses. So that colon represents a range starting from B4, I'm sorry, from B4 to I4. We'll hit enter, and there we go. It does the math right there for us. And something else, if you highlight that cell again, that is really, really handy and saves a lot of time, is this little box right there. That's called the fill handle. I'll put my pointer on it and see how it goes from a fat white plus to a skinny black plus. We're going to click on that fill handle, and we're going to click down, and what that will do is that we'll put in all of our numbers there. It'll do all the math for us. It will fill it in. As you see, it goes down to B5, B6 to I6, B7 to I7. It just includes all those there. And it even totals up the, the whole amount of uh, snack foods that I've produced, which I think is pretty cool. We're going to keep using functions. We're going to go over here, and we're going to, in K3 type average, and enter. We have to resize that a bit. So here comes the average function. So it's equals the whole word average. If you see them in the boxes here, if you want to click on them, you're welcome to do that too. Open parenthesis. I'm going to get the same range here again. So it looks very much the same as our sum function. We'll hit enter. And so what that tells me is for the pretzel line, we were averaging about 62,000 and change. Uh, over the course of the eight months. Not a bad average. So let's take the fill handle and fill handle down only to K11. We don't have to do an average of the total because that doesn't really help us any. And there we go. In L3, we have another function. This one is going to be the min function. This will tell us the minimum amount of units that were produced within the range of months. So we'll type in minimum. We'll expand the cell a bit. Uh, equals M I N. You can capitalize them. You don't have to capitalize them. Excel is smart enough now that it won't matter. Open parenthesis. Same range. Close your parenthesis. Hit enter. So our minimum that we produced was 40,674, which was in that first month of May. Cool, right? Well, I think it's cool. I don't care if you do or not. I think it's cool. And let's make sure that we fill handle down. In the next cell, in the next column, we'll type in an M3 maximum. And then hit enter, resize the cell. And we're going to be doing the complementary function of equals max, open parenthesis, same range. Enter. And fill handle down. So in this case, we see our maximum here. It's not, yeah, it's usually the last month we had. As you see, the production, the production was ramping up, which is fine. Let's kind of scroll over here. In M4, that's N4, we're going to type in goal and hit enter. Now, we're trying to see if we hit a goal or not. So this is a little a little different here. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a high goal, but not one that every production meets. And you'll see why here uh, in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and cheat in some goal numbers here that I came up with that you can do if you want to, but you don't have to. Okay, so here are my goal numbers, and I got those by doing some simple math in Excel. I chose 6,000 for some, I'm sorry, uh, 60,000 for some, 50,000 for others, 30,000 for a small group. And you can do some math in Excel like this, equals 4 plus 7, hit enter, and there's 11. So we'll, there's no reason for you to do any math where you have Excel because you're sitting in front of a giant calculator. Lots of people will 
put in numbers that they have come up with on hand on a calculator and oh, holy crap that's not needed. So again to do math you just have right there equals your numbers, your plus sign, your minus sign. For division you want to make sure that you are doing the slash. So let's see here if I want to do equals 4 divided by 2 it's 4 half, it's 4 forward slash 2 we'll hit enter and we'll get 2. So that's what that looks like for division. If I want to do multiplication, it's the asterisk, which is shift 8, and we'll hit that, and there we see that. So anyway, that's how you do math. There's no more reason to use calculators when you have Excel. Okay, so there are our goals. You are welcome to put in your own goals. Again, you want to make sure the different level goals, and you also want to make sure that not all of your, product hits, your, your products hit those goals, and I'll show you why right now. So now we're going to type in goal status. We want to see if we met our goals or not. So in 03, goal status, enter and resize. Okay, so what we're going to use here is what's called an if choice. And that sounds complicated and they can look a little complicated, but what they do is they run a little logic test to see if what you're asking Excel to do is either true or false. And We'll, we'll break this down. So type in equals if, open parenthesis. So here's what the, the test is going to look like. So if J4, our total, is greater than or equal to our goal, which is N4, that's our test. You see right here, that's our test. That's what we're testing. We have to put in a comma. This next part is what happens if that is true. So if our total is greater than our goal, which in this case it is, what will happen? And so what we'll type in there is quotation goal met, which means Excel will put in a label for us. I'm going to make sure we have a comma there. And now that we have the comma, we shift over here to what happens if it's not true. And if it's not true, we want Excel to tell us the label of goal not met. And we have to make sure we have our quotations around there, because otherwise Excel won't know what to do. And we close our parentheses, and that's what our function will look like. We'll hit enter, and we want to see goal met. Good, that's what we want to see. So we'll highlight that cell, and we'll fill handle down. And some of our goals are met. Our interior section are not met. That's cool. That's what we want to see. All right. So now we're going to do a difference. This is another if choice. So in this case, we're going to see if the goal was not met, how much we didn't meet it by. So we're going to go, we're going to put in here difference. Enter. Resize the cell. Another if choice. So equals if. Open parentheses. And this one is if 04, which is the one we just did, reads is equal to goal met. We want it to do nothing. So if, if it's true, and make sure you put in your comma, if it's true, we want it to return nothing, which in Excel is quotation, quotation. Be careful, it's not four apostrophes. It's two sets of quotation marks. We'll hit our comma again. And if it's false, we needed to do some math. So if it's false, open parenthesis n4 minus j4 so again our total minus our goal sorry our goal minus our total we will close our parentheses twice because that closes the math there and the function again it's it's key that you have two sets of quotation of sorry of parentheses at the end so make sure your parentheses are here for the math and then are here for the function. And we'll hit enter. And now if it comes up blank, it did what we asked because it met our requirements. So it was true. And you can see in the formula bar that our function is there. So we know that it worked. If nothing happens, it's okay. You want to see that. Don't get worried. Fill handle down to P11. And you'll see some math pop up. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. Good for us. Okay.
Uh, let's, let's fix this here. This is just a preference thing. Let's highlight all of this. Let's take it down to the cell style of normal. And then give it heading one again, and that will make sure that we match up here. I'll make sure everything is centered. Because again, I like that. But that's what we want to see. Next, we're going to name our sheet. So let's double click on sheet one. You want to see that there. And we'll type in production. If I can spell. And we'll hit enter. OK. Now, if you have a lot of sheets, you might want to color code it. If you right click on the sheet tab, I'm sorry, if you right click on the sheet tab, you see tab color. You can give it a color if you want. You don't have to, it's preference. Uh, you'll notice as you get more tabs, the colors will get a little darker when you're not on the active one, and it might help you keep things more organized. Again, it's a preference thing. You're welcome to do so, but you don't have to. So let's click on the button here and add a new sheet, and there's our sheet two. You see our color here is blue, it's a darker blue. Again, if you didn't color it, that's okay. On sheet two, let's rename it to distribution. And hit enter. If you want to give it a tab color, you can. I'll, I'll make this one, ooh, this orangey color, because I like that. OK. So from A1 to F1, we're, we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. And this time, we're going to put in our company name, give it a heading one, and have it be dash distribution. Perfect. OK. Now, in cell A3, I want you to put in some different cities, towns. I'm going to use counties. Uh, we need locations for where we're going to distribute our fictitious product. You are welcome to use the exact same counties I do. That's entirely up to you. I'm, go I'm going to go ahead and put those in now. And there they are. Let's expand our cell so we can see everything. Let's go ahead and put in state. And let's also put in target market. And let's expand that cell. OK. For all of them except for Baltimore County, we can put in PA. Now let's do a lowercase a. And once we get out of that cell and come back in, we can fill handle down. And there we go. And for Baltimore County, we'll type in Maryland. I told you wrong. You're going to type in here number of stores. That makes more sense. And we'll hit tab, we'll resize, and we'll put in here, there we go. And hit enter or click down and resize. Whoops, we don't want to highlight. If you click on the column letters, they'll highlight the whole thing. If you want to add formatting to a whole column, that's what you do. The same thing happens for rows here in between. And you can resize uh, rows as well. There you go. OK, I'm going to go ahead and put in some number of stores. OK, so here are my store numbers. They might be a little high and maybe even impractically high, but that's where they're going to be. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply some conditional formatting to them. So what that will do is that will highlight some cells and tell us if uh, they're going to meet some requirements or if they're not going to meet some requirements. So let's highlight the whole range. And let's say that if we are below 150 stores in a county, that's going to that's gonna be our criteria. So we're going to highlight this whole area. We're going to go to the Home tab, Styles, Grouping, Conditional Formatting. We're going to highlight sale rules, and we're going to do less than. So in here, we're going to type in 150. And you can already see it's updating here. That's what we want to see. We're going to leave this as dark red text with a light red fill, but we can change that to a couple of things here. We can give it a red border. We could change it to uh, just a light red fill and leave the text black, you know, green, and yellow. Uh, you can do a custom formatting, which can be a little bit fun, but we're going to leave it right there as is and hit enter. Cool. That's what we want to see. We're going to type in equals if, open parentheses, C4 is greater than or equal to 350. 
comma, we want nothing to show up, comma. If it's less than that, we want to see the target market label pop up. Make sure you have all your commas in and you close your, par your parentheses. We'll hit enter. Nothing shows up. That's good because this is in a target market. We will fill handle down. Make sure you have it on the plus and it's not like that. That will move your cell. This will fill handle down. Okay, so most of our bottom ones here are target markets. This one is also a target market in Juniata County. So that's what we want to see. Wonderful. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some charts. So the first chart we're going to do is a bar chart of our production per county. So let's go ahead and highlight this range here. And we're going to go to insert and we're going to go to the charts section and we want a bar chart. So we're going to do, uh, let's go here to column or bar chart. There's a whole range that you can do, but uh, some 3D ones, some 2D ones, look like that. We want to do a column chart because it's going to be up and down. And I like this one, so here we go. Now, we get something here that doesn't make any sense. We get to see our, our bars here, which is good, but the labels themselves on the chart don't make any real sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to push on the plus sign here for our chart elements. We make sure we have our axes here. And we've got all that going on there. That's cool. What we can do is we can go to this little funnel here and go down to select data. Or we can go up to the data button here on our design contextual tab and we can choose select data. So now this will give us a chance to edit in what we need to edit. So we need to make sure that we have a legend so we know what we're, what we're dealing with here. We need to have the horizontal axes labeled. So let's go ahead and click on edit. Edit this, and now we need to label our axes, which is what we want. We want, and so we will do that there, and there they are. That's what we want to see. Let's go back. I don't think we want county. I think we want number of stores. There we go. We'll hit OK. Perfect. So now we're going to move this sheet. So we go back to Design tab. We're going to click on Move Chart, and we're going to move the chart to a brand new sheet, and we're going to title it Distribution by County. Right now, it's an object on a sheet, but we want it to be a whole separate sheet, and we'll do that, and there, look at it. I think that's kind of pretty. It's easier to read, plus we can copy it and put it uh, other places if we want. All right, so we're going to do now a pie chart of our total production. So let's go back to our production here. Let's highlight this whole range. We just want from J4 to J11. We don't want anything else. We don't want J12's totals in there because that'll make us all kinds of crazy. We'll click on pie chart and let's stick with pie chart. Again, you can do this one if you want. I think these are easier. These are easy to read. And the same thing too, we'll go to select data. We have to select this here, so we need to put in our access labels so we know what each of these are. And there we have it there. We're going to, uh, let's see here, we're going to give the series name total. We like that. We'll push this button again. We'll hit OK. So now that looks like how we want to have it. Now for pie charts, I like to add a little bit in here. So we're going to, first things first, let's move this to a new sheet. Uh, we're gonna put it in here. Make sure you have the, these are called radio buttons. Make sure your radio button is selected for new sheet. And let's call this one total production. I spell production right. by brand, I hit OK, and there we are. Now again, I like to put on here some percentages, so we want to find, there we go. I'm going to choose style 8, so now we see our present our percentages. Actually, I like this one better, so this one is style 9. 
we see our color-coded brands going across. They're right next to their pie sliver. So you can see that our biggest production is between the pretzels and the potato chips, followed by the sour cream and onion and, and uh, barbecue chips. And then we filter in the new ones here. We even had a, a push for the new ones here. So this is a really nice way of seeing all your data in a nice visual way. And it gets its own fun sheet. Again, I think it's fun. You may not. That's whatever. Last but not least, we're going to make a line graph of all of the sheets in totality. So let's go back to production. Let's highlight the whole range from B4 to I11. There we go. And in this case, insert. And let's, where are we here? We want to do a line. And we want this kind right here. So we got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. To make it easier to see, we'll hit select data. OK. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have our numbers uh, named, which is going to be our graphs here. So I'm sorry, our numbers down here along the bottom. So those are going to be the uh, months. So we will do this. And go there and put that in. That's what we want to see along the bottom. We're going to hit OK. Now we have to do the series names. So we'll highlight these here. And that will put us in here. But it kind of scrunches up our, our chart here because it's all on one. It's a little object floating on a sheet. So let's move it to a new sheet. And let's title it uh, Production Over Eight Months. And let's hit uh, OK. All right. So you can see we did something wrong. And this is a problem that I tend to do all the time. I put all of our product numbers under Series 1. So what we have to do now is go back to Select Data. We have to Edit. And we're going to have to put in this for the series name, just that one. We have to repeat this process over and over again. But now our, our chart is going to start making some more sense. So you want to make sure you're kind of thinking through this a little bit as you go. We want to make sure we go back to production. Hit our second theme there. We kind of have to rinse and repeat this enough so we get all of our lines labeled. Now to try to make sure you don't miss one either or label it twice, which I have a tendency to see. I just did that. So this, this part can get a little tricky. Is this tedious? <laughs> Absolutely yes. Is it worth it? Oh, you bet. Okay, man, that took forever, but that's what we want to see now. So there we are. We have to put in our title here. So I would recommend double clicking there and put in production over eight months. And there is our chart. So you can see the number of units here. We see what each individual product is doing over the course of the months. All right, so the last thing we want to do is we want to organize our sheets down here. So I have to take production, so click on that and drag it all the way across to the very end. So the next thing we're going to do is find our distribution and drag that all the way over right next to production. And you can tell you're dragging it because it has a little paper behind the, the mouse. And we'll leave these, these three just as they are in the order that we did. Actually, that's a lie. Let's move this one over here. So now they're in the order in which we did them. All right, so save your Excel spreadsheet, your save your workbook, and you're finished. Thanks, everybody.